I awake to the sounds of heavy breathing and whining. At first, I think it is my dog Pixie, but I'm wrong. I open my eyes and see flashing lights and my eyes burn until they get used to the light. It takes me a couple of minutes to realize I'd woken up in the woods. Why the hell would I wake up in the middle of the damn woods? My house is surrounded by them, but I never go outside after dark and I don't drink at all, so I couldn't have gotten drunk. I lift my head and it hurts like hell. I can't move my neck, it's so sore. I lift my torso up and rest back on my arms. I get lightheaded, so I just sit there until the dizziness goes away. I open my eyes again and see a black figure on the ground a few feet away from me. It's just laying there. I try to stand up, but I can't move my legs. I can't even feel my legs. They aren't asleep, though. Usually when your legs are just asleep, it feels all tingly and it kind of hurts, too. I try grabbing my shins and popping them up on my feet. I get both of my legs to balance on my feet, but I still can't stand up. I try it and try over and over again but I can't do it I begin crying I wake up again and I have no idea what is going on all I know is that I want to go home and be with my girlfriend as I weep it gets harder to breathe and I start to make louder noises then the black figure a few feet away from me moves it looks like it's trying to get up and it's struggling like I was it gasps loudly and starts to sob and groan as well. I recognize the voice. It's my girlfriend. Anna? I ask. Anna, is that you? Where are we? Why are we out here? How did we get out here? She asks, barely able to talk through her tears. I don't know. I can't get up. I can't feel my legs. I think I'm paralyzed. I said, starting to cry more. She gets on her knees and crawls over to me. The flashlight lights off in the distance, make her visible every couple of seconds. I scream and cry uncontrollably when I see her. Anna, I yell, your face, your neck. What? She yells back. What happened to you? She has cut marks all over her face. One of her eyebrows is completely missing. She has cut marks on her cheeks and forehead, and one going from her eye, through her nose and lips, to the tip of her chin. I can see her chin bone through the wound. There are cuts on her shoulders and collarbone, and after moving closer to put my arms around her, I see the most terrifying wound. Her neck had been cut, and it was still gushing blood. It looks like someone tried to kill us. You're badly hurt. We need to get to an ambulance. I yell. She raises her hands to feel around her face, but it just makes matters worse. Her ring finger is missing, and her right index fingers are missing, and her hands and arms are all cut up as well. She screams and keeps screaming until I start yelling at her to be quiet. We're never going to get out of here alive unless you calm down and think. I yell at her. She just keeps on crying and gets closer to me. Just as I am about to put my arms around her, she jolts back and pushes on me with her hands to push me away. What? I ask. You got blood on me. You're hurt too. She says. Where? I asked. Where am I hurt? She gets even closer to get a better look. She puts her hands up to her mouth and closes her eyes. She is trying to say something, but it sounds mumbled because her hands are in the way. What did you say? I asked. You're... you're shot, she yelled. Right in the head. I feel around my hair until I find the hole. She's right. I, I'm shot. I can feel it on one side of my head and also on the other. But am I all cut up? I ask. She looks around my body and doesn't find anything. I take my shirt off so she can wrap it around her neck, and the sudden surge of cold air that hits my back feels like a thousand needles. I tell her to look at my torso and back. As she searches my torso, she doesn't find anything. But as she looks at my back, she screams once again. There's a huge hole in your back, she yells. It's from top to bottom, 
Only half of your spine is there. What the fuck? I yell. That explains why I couldn't move my legs. Listen, listen, we have to get out of here. So you need to calm down and listen to me. You need to drag me by the hands. I know you can do it. Let's go towards those lights. It might be a party or tow truck picking up an abandoned car or something. Okay, I, I can do that, she says. She grabs me by my shoulders and turns me over on my stomach, and then grabs my left hand. I use my right hand to raise my upper body up off the ground, and I use my hand like a leg, or like how a monkey walks, so that we can get out of the woods faster. I look at our hands holding onto each other. I can feel the nub where her right index finger used to be. It's bad timing, but I puke. I puke all over my right hand and on the ground. She drags me through it, but I don't care. We're both covered in blood, sweat, and now puke. But we will survive this. I think to myself, we have to. The closer to the lights we get, the more we start to hear voices. The clearer they become. It's a party for sure, I think. I don't know what else it could be. We're almost there, Anna says. The lights are just a couple of blocks away. We're coming downhill, so it's easier to see the lights outside the tree line. It looks like there's a small clearing, so it has to be a road. It's a tow truck, I say. I knew it! We both start becoming really excited. We go down the hill, and we see it wasn't a tow truck, but a group of four cop cars and two ambulances. Were they searching for us? I ask excitedly. I think so, Anna says. Uh, over here! I yell, we're over here, we're Anna and Ryan. I begin to run out of breath from crawling and screaming. I can't talk anymore, Anna, you gotta get their attention, I say. Over here, we're coming, we're badly hurt, Anna screams. We can see four police officers standing together talking, two with dogs, and we can see two more police officers putting down flares in the road to stop oncoming traffic from getting too close. We get to the bottom of the hill, and out of the trees, and onto the shoulder of the road. Anna gets too excited, and she lets go of my hand. I don't catch myself, and I land face first in a pile of mud. My head hitting the ground so hard, it makes me dizzy, and I can't collect my strength to pull myself up again, until I'm almost out of breath and drowning in the mud. Come back! Pull me! I yell. Anna comes back and grabs my hand and starts pulling me again. My stomach is getting torn up on the pavement of the road, but I don't mind. It's not as if I had any choice in the matter. We are safe now, anyways. She drags me around the ambulance, onto the street, and we see two gurneys with bodies on them. They are wrapped in blankets and have a million tubes and bags surrounding them. She drags me closer and we realize... It's... Us. On the gurneys. We freeze. Neither of us move. We don't know what to say, think, or do. We are both paralyzed at that point. I look down to the ground with my mouth open. I can hear the medics talking. What happened to the male? One of the medics asked. Gunshot to the head, and get this, the guy ripped out half of his spine. He cut open his back and ripped out half of his spine. I don't know how he did it. Probably used a saw or something, I don't know. The other medic replies. And the female? Slit neck, multiple stab wounds and cuts all over the body and two missing fingers. The second medic says. Uh, they have already done all they can to stop the bleeding from her neck until they get to the hospital and they are using a breathing mask on her. I look up and see a bright light form around Anna. She turns around and looks at me crying. She disappears. I lower my head once again and start to sob. Then I hear something. I hear coughing. I look up and I see Anna trying to get out of the bed and the medics are trying their hardest to keep her down. She begins crying uncontrollably and screaming about how she can save me and she knows where I am. She looks over in the direction where she sees me. I swear we make eye contact and just as we do, I became so full of hope. I know I am going to be saved. I crawl over to my bed where I am and I wait. I never come back. The ambulance leaves and so does Anna and the police. I sit here in the middle of nowhere, dead and alone. 
I begin to beat myself in the head with my fists, then grab a rock. I hear bones breaking, and I knock myself unconscious. But I just wake up, still sitting here with my rock in my hand like nothing happened. Kill me, I start to scream. If I could, I would just do it. At that moment, I begin to hear whispers. It sounds like they are coming from all around me. I plug my ears, and then they become silent. I look around and down the street. I think I see another black figure. I start crawling towards it, and as I get closer, I realize it's a man in a black robe. He starts walking towards me as well. We get to be a couple of feet from each other, and I am just staring at him. I can't see his face because of the robe, but I can see his hands. They are white with black, sharp fingernails. Who are you? I ask. Just kill me. As I finish my last sentence, the man grabs me by the throat, digs his fingernails in my neck, picks me up, and throws me into a brown burlap sack. He tightens the opening to it and walks off into the woods and disappears.